All right, everybody, we're back. We're going to get this going. We're going to have to broadcast from my page, and I'm going to attempt to share it to the church's page. We're going to have church. <laughs> Amen. Heavenly Father, we just ask you right now, we thank you for the incredible opportunity we have to share. We're asking you, Lord, that you will intervene every work of the enemy that's trying to disrupt and make this difficult. After hours and hours of preparation and getting it just right, the enemy now wants to frustrate us all. But we're not going to be frustrated, God, because we have a message to share today that we believe is going to touch lives and that, God, you're going to kick doors open and people that need to hear are going to hear. And we trust you in it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get ready. Let's get at it with church. Go for it, Phil. Welcome, church. We are so excited that you have decided to join us this morning. You know, praise is how we receive breakthrough. So today, let's just give him all the honor, all the praise, all the glory right now. Because he's deserving of it. No matter how the enemy tries to still kill and destroy, Jesus has come to give life. Who brings the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless? This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would tame my face That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Worthy is the 
Let's just take a moment to pray and ask God to enter into this place and enter into your hearts and in your homes right now as we continue to worship and to invite him in. Father, today as we are scattered across the city, the county, some maybe even around the world who are listening into this service today, we find ourselves sheltered in place and in our homes, maybe gathered with our immediate family. And what an incredible, comforting knowledge it is, the thought that the Holy Spirit of God can be in all places at all times with everyone, that He can be as real 
in your home as he is right here in the presence of our, of our sanctuary living room here. That the anointing and the power and the authority of God is there with you. And he is ready and he is active. He has a plan for you. And he desires to set that plan in action. Even in the midst of uncertain times, certain, God always has a plan for today and for tomorrow. So right now, God, I ask by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would settle in. God, that you would settle in to those that are out there, God. And that you would help them to sense your Holy Spirit even now. That, God, a comfort will come over them. A peace that passes all understanding. A knowledge that God has this. I pray, Lord, with all the things that have gone on this morning, the distractions and Long before we ever started the podcast, I'm sure the enemy was working, trying to get people, get the kids to stay in bed, get things not to work. We weren't the first ones to have a struggle this morning. And yet in the midst of all of that, you never ceased to be God, and your plan never changed. So now, God, finish that work in us today as we yield ourselves to you. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to encourage each and every one of you out there in the love of the Lord. Welcome to Carlsbad First Assembly Live right here uh, on this beautiful uh, Palm Sunday today. And uh, we want to encourage all of you to make sure that, uh, that you're staying plugged in on the website. Make sure you're going to the website, clicking on the prayer blog. I haven't seen hardly any prayer requests coming in. I know so, there's a lot of people in my congregation that need us to pray for you. And for me to do that effectively, I need you to go to our website, www.carlsbadfirst.com, click on the prayer blog, and put in your prayer request. And that will go out to me, the prayer team, and the staff so that we can be praying for you. And it'll give you a chance to look and see if others have asked for prayer. And maybe you can take a minute out of your day to pray for all of those that are asking for prayer requests and connect us all together. As we move forward, um, as I shared yesterday in a, in a video message to all of you, we're looking at uh, several more weeks of, of this kind of business as usual. And each week we get a little bit better. I was very excited this morning because we had some great things planned and lined out, and then we had the one little glitch. But we got it fixed, but uh, we'll make sure that uh, we look and uh, we pay attention to what the screen's saying, so we send the broadcast out to the right Facebook page next week. But, uh, but even with all of that that's going on, even though there's things you could look at and say, well, that didn't go, didn't go as good as this week as it did last, actually, there's so many exciting things going on right now, and I just want to share with you at least one of those things. Number one, this morning I got a me- well, I actually got a message. Uh, it was either early this morning or last night from Kim Arrington. So excited, she said she already had over 20 women that had contacted her to be a part of her women's ministries Bible study that takes place at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings before our main service starts. She was so excited. And so I am going to be putting onto this news feed for this, uh, for this broadcast her email. She said she, she's glad there was 20, but she is believing with God's help that she'll get all of the women. That would be a pretty amazing thing. Everyone that is, every woman that considers Carlsbad First Assembly their home to come in, plug in, and be a part of it. She said we laugh, we cry, we love on each other. And it's being such an incredible bonding time and healing time. So we're going to encourage all of our ladies, plug in, be a part of that. Couples, plug in and be a part of our our Zoom call Bible study that the couples are doing. And and, uh, we have our Wednesday night Bible study. You want to plug into that as well. So make sure you dial in to those things. Now, I did want to share with you, and with all that was going on a minute ago, I didn't get a chance to go grab it. So... Next Sunday, I announced yesterday, next Sunday, on Easter Sunday, we will be partaking of communion service. Now, some of you are thinking, how do we do that and not be able to come to church? Well, it's going to be pretty easy. Uh, You're going to have the opportunity during the service um, to simply in your household. uh, I I told Amy about what we used to do with the youth where we would give them a grape. And a, and a cracker, and she said, oh, I like that idea. Just get a grape and a cracker. Listen, it's just a symbol. That's all it is. It's to remind you of something. You can grab whatever you want around the house. You can use water. You can use juice. 
anything you want. Or if you want to take the time, I've actually purchased a pre-packaged communion kits. It has the grape juice and then the covering and then the, and then the element, the bread element on top with another covering to keep it all uh, safely secured and healthy. We will have those and we will provide them to you on Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can drive by the church, pick up uh, a cup for yourself or enough for your immediate family that will be in your house for the communion. Please do me a favor. Let's just keep the numbers down to that. Please don't grab more than that. I only have a limited supply of these, and I don't want to run out for families that may want it. So, so where, where, where it might be nice to grab 30 of them and hand them out to all your neighbors. Uh, uh, at this point, I'd rather just those cups. Let's just get those for our church members. Be careful. Um, we're still under, um, uh, under lockdown, and so uh, just one person comes in the car. We'll, the front door will be open. They'll be on a table. You'll come. You'll take the ones that you need. You'll leave don't congregate around the church as you pick them up. But Monday, Tuesday from 9 to 11, and for those of you that still have the opportunity to work, it will be available Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So Monday, Tuesday, 9 through 11, Wednesday, 4 to 8 p.m. And as I mentioned on my video yesterday, I have a really, actually now I have two very cool announcements to make Next Sunday, here in our Easter service, I am so excited to share with you how God, in a season where a lot, a lot of my people might think the church is having to kind of close down and close their doors, you know, a, 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 a reporter announced the other day after Trump's uh, uh, media thing, he said, well, uh, strange that the first time in America in our history that we won't be celebrating Easter. Oh, I got... I hate to correct the gentleman. We are going to celebrate Easter next week, and God's got some incredible things to share. I've got two amazing announcements I want to share with you. One of them, though, you can continue to help me with. Over the next few days, we're going to try to reach out to everybody in this church. If I don't get a hold of you, I need you to reach back. We need every single person's, um, or at least one for the household, at the very least, but, but it would be good even if we had the teenagers and the kids' emails if they have their own. We need all of your email addresses up to date. So put them on the, the feed for this, uh, for this live feed today. Type it in. Put your name. Put what your email address is. Text me, 575-361-4389. Um, Text me with your email address. But as quickly as you can, we need, a, we need to have all the emails we can have before next Easter, because that's going to be part of this one of the surprises, all right? Well, I'm excited to hear what Pastor Patrick has to share with us today. So pay attention as Pastor Patrick comes to share the word. All right. Well, good morning, CFA family. Um, I am so excited to be a part of this series that we are continuing Breakthrough Easter. Um, you know, Pastor, um, I've been listening to the message. One of the cool things about having these messages um, you can go back and listen to them over and over. Have you guys ever heard a sermon and you get home and you're like, man, I wish I could remember what they said. Well, now you can go back and just watch it again. I've watched these messages a few times and man, these breakthrough series has just been so amazing. And so I'm just really excited to be a part of that and, and to, to get to come this morning and, and continue in the breakthrough series. And it's a special week for us uh, in the church because it's Palm Sunday. And we know that, you know, with Easter and everything else and we celebrate, it's one of the biggest times in the church. And this is one of the weirdest Palm Sundays we've had because of everything going on. But nevertheless, we serve a living God. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem to, to a lot of fanfare. He was a hero. He was celebrated. And during this time, there was so much going on. And, and he was doing teachings that people, like, like, people had never heard anything like what he was saying. And he was performing miracles and doing amazing things. And with all that going on, people had started to gather. And he entered Jerusalem a hero. He rode on the back of a donkey, and, and, and that's important too because if he was about war and everything else, he'd have come in on the back of a horse, but he came in on a donkey signifying peace. And with all that and all that celebration, even though the crowds were celebrating Jesus, in just a few days, they would change. See, they celebrated him when he rode into town, but by Friday, they would be the same ones cheer that. The same ones that cheered and celebrated would be the same ones yelling, crucify him, crucify him. 
See, Jesus would take the punishment for all sin in the world. He would make it possible for you and me to experience salvation, to experience eternity in heaven. The best news is three days later, Jesus would be resurrected. See, it's an incredible time to, to be in the, in the church body and a part of the family because we know the price that was paid for you and I. We know what, what Jesus did when He went to the cross. He defeated the grave and He is alive and well today. Jesus took the punishment for you and me to make it possible for us to experience salvation, to enter into eternity in heaven. We serve a King who is alive and well. Scripture tells us the power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that dwells in you. That same power that dwells in you, that same power that raised Christ from the dead is the power that's going to see you have your breakthrough that you've been waiting for. The same power that overcame sin and death and resurrected Jesus is the same power that we're going to celebrate all week long as we prepare for Easter. It's the same power that we are going to trust in as we look for our breakthrough. Today, as we continue our series, Breakthrough Easter, I want to ask you a simple question. I want to ask you something this morning that, that I believe will tell a lot about how you prepare for your breakthrough, how you position, position yourself for a breakthrough. This morning, I want to ask you a question. What kind of people do you allow into your life? Have you surrounded yourself with people that are faith-filled believers that will carry you to Jesus in the moment of crisis? How do they respond when things go bad? What kind of people have you surrounded yourself with? Or have you surrounded yourself with people who will speak death, who gossip, who backbite, who love to share that, that next piece of gossip that they came across, who in the moment of crisis would tear down your faith? They like to be realists and always give you the most negative prognosis. Maybe you don't have any close friends. The reality is we live in a world today that with all the technology and all the, all the apps and all the ways to connect today, I believe we are lonelier than ever before. So many people don't have those close friends. When we're in crisis, doubt starts to creep in and our hearts can wander all by ourselves. It's a dangerous place to be. We need faith-filled friends who will lift us up we need to surround ourselves with faith-filled friends and be faith-filled friends to others. It's a necessity today. We need each other to see breakthrough. We can't do life alone. Pastor Phil, one of the, one of the pastors that we have here, he always says something that, that always sticks out to me. He always says, it's, it's a pleasure doing life with you. We need people in our lives that we can do life with, that will stand with us through the hard times, that will be with us to celebrate when we have a victory. We need to do life with other believers. This morning we're going to look at Scripture and we're going to see a story that so well illustrates what it's like to have faith-filled friends that would stand with us through those moments. Jesus was able to perform a miracle because some faith-filled friends in Luke chapter 5 we read about a man who was paralyzed. This man had lived his entire life laying on a mat. And this was just his existence. Being paralyzed meant that this man could do nothing for himself. See, his whole world looked like this. He would wake up and he would wait for someone to carry him to the spot where he would beg. And he would lay there looking up at people as they passed by, hoping that they would give him something. And then we'd have to wait there for those same people to carry him back to where he would sleep and eat. He'd have to have someone bring him food. Every part of his existence was dependent on someone else. And it was a horrible time because technology wasn't what it was. There were no surgeries. There was no physical rehab. Nothing that would change his existence. Nothing that could even help him get by. Could you imagine facing life that way? Facing life in such a bad situation. And as bad as it was physically, there were other issues. See, in the ancient world, people with physical defects were viewed as dispensable or disposable. Worse, historians believe the Greeks usually disposed of newborns if they had physical defects. In fact, the Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote, Let there be a law that no deformed child shall be raised to adulthood. And the Romans in the 5th century had a statute that had read, Quickly kill a deformed child. It's brutal. 
And the reality is that's how they looked at people during this time. So someone that was paralyzed, it wasn't just the existence of having to depend on everybody else. They were viewed in a different way. And not only that, during this time, a lot of people had the idea that if you were physically deformed or if you had something in your life that was wrong, that it was God punishing you for a sin. Suffering was a punishment from God. So this man was thought of as different, less than useless. He was cursed by God in many eyes. Yet somehow he was able to surround himself with some incredible friends that were willing to do life with him. More than anything, for their paralyzed friend, they wanted to see him healed. And they heard about this man named Jesus and the power that he had. And they realized that if they could just position their friend near Jesus, that he'd have the breakthrough that he's been waiting for. See, they heard about Jesus because at this time, Jesus had been going around teaching and people had never heard anyone teach the way he had. And he was performing miracles, lives were being changed, and he was starting to gain a lot of popularity. People knew who he was. And these guys believed that if they could just get their friend close, that they, he would get his healing, that he would get the breakthrough he was waiting for. Whatever kind of sacrifice they would have to make, they were willing to do it. Those are the kind of friends I want in my life. Those are the kind of people I want to surround myself with that when I'm going through something, they're going to see me through my storm. They're going to push me and do whatever it takes to get me to the other side. They informed their friend that the next day they would pick him up and take him to Jesus. And we don't know if, if this man had the same faith in Jesus that they did, but he didn't really have a choice because they were going to literally pick him up and take him. Imagine the journey. They carried their friend all the way to Jesus. Think about the commitment these friends must have had. The man and his friends arrived at the house where Jesus was. I don't know if you've ever had a plan. You're going through something, you're dealing with something, and you have a plan in place. You say, this is going to be it, this is going to be my breakthrough. These people showed up at the house with their plan perfectly laid out. And all of a sudden when they got there, they realized that this house was so crowded, people were crammed in just as desperate to be near to Jesus as they were. To hear the word, to get their own miracle. Not only was the house so overly crowded, but it was pouring into the outside. And people were crowding the doors and windows just hoping to catch a glimpse of Jesus. And there was no way they were going to be able to get him in to position him for his breakthrough. You know, to think about putting in that much work, to have a plan, to have hope and excitement for the first time in his life, to think that he's finally going to get his breakthrough, that he might actually get his healing, and then to show up and this is what it looks like. I think so many times we have our best laid plans. We get there and it doesn't look the way that we wanted it to look. Uh, it was so important for him to have friends that weren't willing to give up there. It was so important that they didn't stop there. The man and his friends arrived at the house where Jesus was only to find it completely packed. They carried their friend all this distance and they couldn't even get close. No one would have blamed them for giving up. Their journey there was difficult enough. In spite of their good intentions, sometimes our plans just don't work out the way we hoped. But this group of friends, however, was determined to see their friend get his healing. They were desperate for their friend. The buddy needed healing. They were going to... They were not going to let him live another day in this crippled condition. Their friend needed a miracle. They believed Jesus could give him this miracle, and they were going to find a way. So they began to put their heads together and come up with a plan. You know, I don't know if you've ever been around someone that... I, I had a friend of mine growing up. Me and him were, were best friends, and whenever me and him got together, we just came up with dumb ideas. I don't know what it was. I don't know if some of y'all have people in your life that way. Different people affect us differently. Sometimes you get around certain people and they, and they, ca they calm you down. They, they, they cause you to, to be at a, a, a lower decibel level in your life. Others will cause you to get frustrated easier. Uh, different people react differently. But I had this friend, me and him, whenever we were together, we just did dumb things for whatever reason. And this group of guys, they came up with a plan. And I bring that up because their plan, I don't know who put this plan together, but it reminds me of me and my buddy. Because this plan was crazy. It didn't make any sense. And it, it broke a lot of norms that you wouldn't really think about. For one, this man was paralyzed. And their plan that they came up with, they decided, hey, I got an idea. We're going to take you up onto the roof. We're going to rip a hole in the roof. And then we're going to lower you on your mat down in front of Jesus. Now that plan, this is a crippled man on a mat that they're going to carry to a rooftop. 
and then lower down? What if he falls off the mat? What if something goes wrong? What if Jesus is mad at them because they, they interrupted what his teaching was? What if there's so many things wrong? For one, you just don't rip a hole in a roof. I don't know. That just doesn't seem smart. But these guys didn't care because they had a plan. And they had come all this way to get their friend positioned to get his healing. See, faith-filled friends will do crazy things. Sometimes it seems crazy in the natural. But they weren't willing to give up until God showed up. I want to say that again. They weren't willing to give up until God showed up. I want to encourage you to surround yourself with people who will refuse to give up until God shows up. I wish I could have witnessed them moving this paralyzed friend to the roof. See, they would have had to go around to the back of the house and bring him up a a very tight stairwell to get access to the roof. Then these guys were committed to not giving up. They got the man to the roof and they started tearing it apart. Could you imagine being in the house at that time? You're, you're, You're just in awe of this teacher and you're listening to Jesus and all this, and then suddenly things start to just fall from the roof. And then as things begin to fall from the roof, you, you start to notice there's a little light coming through. And then you just see fingers coming through the roof and ripping it apart until finally there's a hole big enough where you can look up and see these four guys. And you could probably see them just smiling proud of themselves. They just ripped a hole in the roof and they're just as happy with themselves as they could be because they're, they're pulling it off. And then they begin to lower this man down and through the roof. As everyone stared bewildered, the hole grew larger and finally the four smiling faces would appear. And in Luke chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, it says this, Once the hole was big enough, they lowered him on on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. I love that they came hoping for a physical healing, and Jesus looked at him in his current state and saw what was more important. And he met his spiritual needs. We serve a God who loves us. And so many times we can see in the natural what's wrong that we think is wrong. But God will look into our situation and see what we really need. And he loves us enough to meet that need. Jesus addressed the more important issue of the man's spiritual condition. Isn't it just like God to give us what we need? Not just what we ask for. Jesus forgave the man's sins, which is the greatest need of everyone. But Jesus wasn't done yet. A moment later, he said to the paralyzed man in Luke chapter 5, verse 24 through 26, he said, I tell you, get up, take up your mat and go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen a remarkable thing today. Also, can't help but to notice when Jesus saw it, he said, uh, When Jesus saw their faith, not just the man's faith, it said he saw their faith. It was the faith of the friends that got the man to Jesus. It was the faith of the friends that positioned the man for the miracle he needed. If he had not surrounded himself with the right friends, he would not have ever gotten to Jesus. Never gotten healed, never gotten his physical healing. He never would have heard about Jesus telling him his sins were forgiven. Without his friends, his miracle would have never happened. I want to share with you four things that faith-filled friends should do for you in your life. Believing big, praying big friends do to position you for the breakthrough that you're looking for. The first thing is this. Faith-filled friends will carry you to Jesus. In your crisis, in your storm, in your moments, sometimes we need someone to carry us. We need someone that can help us get there. You need friends in your life who will carry you to Jesus. This man's friends were not content leaving him paralyzed and hopeless. They were what it took for this man to find a breakthrough. What they committed to do wasn't easy, but they were not okay with the status quo. They did not accept the fact that this man was paralyzed and forever would be. They pushed this man out of his comfort zone. I hope you have friends that challenge you to get out of your comfort zone, that push you to do things that that you may not necessarily want to do. They push this man out of his comfort zone. We need faith-filled friends who will surround us and push us out of what we're comfortable in to see something more. We need friends who don't just accept the situation has always been and will always be. We need friends who love us enough to carry us through 
to carry us to Jesus when we can't carry ourselves. This man was literally unable to position himself to receive a breakthrough. He needed his friend's help. It would have never happened without these men that loved him. Because of the faith of his friends, he was healed. We also have to be willing to allow people to carry us. You know, we live in a generation and a culture, and today's world, it is so different because we feel like we have to be so fiercely independent that we can't lower our guard long enough to tell someone that we need help, that we need someone to carry us. We live in a kind of a DIY culture where we want to do everything ourselves. We want to be self-sufficient in everything. And the idea of letting someone know that I need help, the idea of letting know someone that I'm weak or that I'm struggling, most of us, we can't get past our pride long enough to get there. We don't like to give up control and rely on others. What if that's the thing that's keeping you from your breakthrough? What if your pride is the only thing standing between you and what God wants for your life? We need to be willing to allow our friends to carry us to Jesus. Our relationships and who we spend time around is so important. When we need help, we need to share our burdens. We need people to pray. There is something inside of us so many times that thinks that I don't want to ask, I don't want to impose, I don't want to inconvenience anyone. I understand sometimes I feel like that. I, I feel like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's not worth, worth, you know, inconveniencing anybody. Can I tell you this morning that it is so important that we share with one another, that we have friends that we talk to and that talk to us. I want you to realize something that you... In our world, we feel like we have to be strong and have victories for people to like us. But the reality is people don't connect to you through your strengths. They connect to you through your struggles. They will learn to trust you, and, and, and you will have to learn to trust them in those times when you need someone to lean on. When we need help, we need to share our burdens. We need people to pray. We, we need to be able to step out and say, you know what, I, I need the help. Do you let your friends carry you? Do you ask? Do you show them your weakness and struggles? Are you that kind of a friend who gives people the confidence that you will carry them when they need it? Do people ask you? Do people show you their weaknesses and struggles? Let's be the kind of friend that we can lean on one another and trust one another. The second thing is this. Surround yourself with friends that will speak life into your situation. You know, you have the right kind of friends by what comes out of their mouths, especially when you're seeking a miracle, especially when things go wrong. You know, I think you start to see the real character of people when things start to turn upside down. Do they share God's wisdom on their own opinion? Or do they share God's wisdom or do they share their own opinions? Do they have a faith-fueled, God-centered positivity about them? Or do they speak negative thoughts that only intensify your doubts. When you have insecurities, when you have doubts, you need people that will speak above those and bring you out of your place. The Bible tells us the power of life and death is in the tongue. We need friends who are going to speak life over us. See, the thing is with the tongue, you can speak life into someone or you can speak death into someone. And so many times in this world, we say, oh, it's only words. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect you. Everything we say matters. The words we speak have power. Do people speak life into you or they speak death into your situation? People throw around words like it doesn't really matter. Our power words don't have that kind of effect. We need friends who will speak the truth and promises of God over our lives and situations. I've heard people say it's, it's just the realist in the situation. We don't need someone that only sees the physical side of our situations. There's nothing wrong with recognizing the reality of what's going on, but we need people that have a faith to know that even though the reality is this, in the natural it looks like this, we need people who say, I know a God that is bigger than the natural, that is bigger than the reality that we see. We need a God, we need friends that can say, I know a God that still lives, that is still on the throne. In the natural world, is no match for what He can do. We need a friend that will walk with us through those situations. We need a group of friends who will speak spiritual truth over our lives, who will stand with us and speak breakthrough truth over what we're walking through. The third thing is we need friends who will exhibit crazy faith. That friend that you get around that things just, nothing is impossible anymore. 
I want to surround myself with some people that, that, you know, in the natural, it might seem out of the ordinary, but I believe God is speaking, and so we're going to do it, regardless of the cost. We need friends who will exhibit crazy faith. Crazy faith causes people to do crazy things. That's how you know you have a crazy faith-filled friend. What seems crazy to us sometimes is exactly what moves the hand of God and positions us for our breakthrough. Carrying a paralyzed man across the city to get to a man they had never met is a little crazy. But then taking him up on the roof and ripping a hole in it and lowering him down through it, that's a crazy faith. Thank God for crazy, faith-filled friends that will allow nothing to stop them from you getting your breakthrough. That crazy faith impressed Jesus and breakthrough happened. This man was saved spiritually and physically because he had friends willing to do something that looked crazy. When you're focusing, when you're following God, get ready. He might ask you to do something that looks a little crazy. Scripture tells us that God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. What may seem crazy to you is exactly what makes sense to God. You know, so many times we have moments where we're like, man, I just don't know if this makes sense. I feel like God is telling me this. I want you to find a friend that when you say, man, this doesn't make any sense, but God is telling me to do it, that they say, you know what? If God's telling you to do it, not only are you going to do it, but I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to see you through this moment. We need faith-filled friends who will walk out of the normal place to see what God is doing. The fourth thing is this. I want you to find faith-filled friends who will help you have a God perspective. Have friends that will help you to stay in a mindset that recognizes we serve a living God. And He is more than able and capable to see you have that breakthrough that you've been waiting for. In the middle of a crisis, you need faith-filled friends who will help you see God's perspective on all things. Think of the paralyzed man. This man lived his existence on a mat, looking up at people. His whole existence was very limited. He would go from the place where he slept and ate to the place where he begged and back again, looking up at people. That was the extent of his existence. And without faith-filled friends, that never would have changed. But he had friends that took him up onto a rooftop where for the first time in his life, he was looking up and over everything all the circumstances, all the things that he had been trapped under, his perspective was vastly different in that moment. This goes a long way to speaking life into someone. We need faith-filled friends in our lives that will help us see a different perspective. When crisis hits and impossibilities come into our lives, I want a faith-filled friend who will speak above them that say, you know what, I can't see through the storm, but I can tell you that you and I are going to get to the other side because the promises of God are true and are good. We need friends who will snap us out of our perspective. We need friends who will carry us to Jesus and help us see perspective on what we are walking through. This is especially important when we face situations and challenges that last a long time. You know, some of you have been waiting for your breakthrough and you've been bearing a burden for so long. And it is so important for you to surround yourself with people that will come alongside you when you say, I don't have the strength anymore. That will come alongside you and say, you know what, God, God is still on the throne and we are going to see it through. We need faith-filled friends who will take us back to Scripture to find God's perspective. We don't need their opinions. We don't need what they think is going on. What we need is godly perspective and His Word for our lives. Let's be faith-filled friends who help the people in our lives have God's perspective on what they are walking through. That's how we have, that's how we help people have hope. Can I tell you, church, we have a hope that this world can't even begin to understand. And all the stuff that's going on, as crazy as our world is today, it is so important for people to realize that we serve a living God. That no matter how crazy the world gets, no matter what's going on, we have a Heavenly Father who is still on the throne and is still there to see you have your breakthrough. Surround yourself with people who will help you to see that perspective. Surround yourself with people who will carry you to Jesus if need be. And be that kind of person that you'll carry someone to Jesus when they need it. 
we need to have a perspective that realizes God's promises are just as true today as they were yesterday and they'll be just as true tomorrow. We serve a living God. This morning as I close, I want to encourage you, if you don't have a faith-filled friend, if you don't have friends around you that sound like what I'm talking about, I, I encourage you to start asking God to bring those people into your life, to start bringing those people into your world. And don't just pray and wait. Be active in it. Start connecting with people. Right now, we are, we are distancing. You can't really come to the church, but you know what? You can reach out to people on Facebook, text someone, call someone. Get engaged. Begin to step out of your comfort zone to see people surrounding you. I want to challenge our congregation and everyone that hears this message to be like the friends who carried this man to the Jesus. There are people in congregation who need faith-filled friends to stand beside them right now. Be on the lookout. I ask that God would give us the kind of eyes that would see people in need, that we would be willing to step out. I believe this church, one of the things I'm so proud of this church is that when we see a need, we're not afraid to step out and meet it no matter how hard it is, no matter how complicated it seems, because we have believers in this church that'll say, you know what, it doesn't seem like it's something we can pull off, but I have a God that I know can. Be the church that will step out. Look for people who need a faith-filled friend and fill that place. We need to be the church that is willing to stand on the promises of God and step, step into people's lives and stand in that gap when they're struggling. I want to challenge you to be that. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus, I encourage you to do it today. The Bible says that all we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus is our Savior. And He'll come into your life. And He'll take away your sins. And just like this paralytic man, He'll forgive you of your sins. And He will heal the thing that matters the most all of your circumstances, all this worldly stuff going on, the breakthrough that you're waiting for, it all pales in comparison to the decision to give your life to God because that decision will last for all eternity. When all of this is gone, when all of it fades away, we will be forever in eternity with our Heavenly Father that loved us so much to send His Son to pay the price that we couldn't. This morning, church, I'm going to close in prayer. And I want to encourage you to be those faith-filled friends for those people around you. Next week is Easter Sunday. You know, we, we uh, love Easter because so many times the people that you've been trying to get into church for so long, it's the week that they're willing to come. And this year it's so different because we can't come to the building. But that doesn't mean you can't invite them to be a part of what we're doing. You can invite them to join in, have a watch party, do whatever it takes so that they hear the word. Because the hope that you have, the power that lives inside of you that raised Christ from the dead, they so desperately need. We need to be the church, especially in these uncertain times. This morning, I thank you for tuning in. We're going to pray and believe that God is going to see some breakthroughs happen. God, this morning, with all the, with all the, the difficulties and all the challenges, I know that you are still on the throne. And I believe that you are going to surround some people with some faith-filled friends. God, I ask that you would give us the strength to be those kind of friends, to walk in a crazy faith, to walk in a boldness, God, to be the kind of friends that we need. God, I ask that we would be the ones that would stand in the gap for those that need breakthroughs. God, and those that are struggling with breakthroughs, God, I ask that you would bring their friends around them and that we wouldn't stop, that we wouldn't relent, God, that we would be the kind of people that would say, I'm not going to stop until God shows up. God, help us to be those faith-filled friends. And this morning, God, I ask for all those that have not given their life to you, that you would show them who you are and that they would make that decision this morning to say, you know what, God, I, I'm a sinner and I've messed up, but this morning I want to make it right with you. I want you to be the Lord over my life. Come into my life and be my Savior. God, I thank you for all those that do that. God, we just lift you up and we give you all the praise and glory. Even in these uncertain times, God, we will praise you because you are good and we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning as we close out, I just want to encourage you to reach out to someone in these times. You know, text someone, call someone, 
get on Facebook, message them, whatever you got to do. Be the kind of friends that people need right now. If you decided to give your life to God this morning, I encourage you to share that with someone. Share it on our Facebook feed. Tell someone about it. It's an amazing thing, and we want to celebrate with you. We want to we want to just get on board with you and, and celebrate how amazing that life decision is. Because no matter what you're facing in life, no matter what breakthrough you're waiting for, that is the biggest decision you can make in your life. And we are excited that you joined us here this morning, and we thank you so much, Pastor. Joining on the journey. This is a journey that God never designed for us to do alone. Amen. What a powerful word reminding us that it's not just about waiting for somebody else to invite us to join them, but it's about making sure that we connect with others. Don't social distance right now. Physical distance is good. Socially and spiritually, stay united and bonded together. And, and as Pat said, if you did... Uh, accept the Lord into your life. Make sure you put that in the, the feed so we can follow up and encourage you. We want to be a part of your lives. So as we get ready to conclude our service today with everything that kind of went a little crazy in the beginning, some of you were not able to catch the very first part where we ran the announcements. So we just thought maybe for some of you there's some important information you might want to see it. So we're going to go ahead and run the announcements and a little music and close it out. This will be the last time any of us comes up to say hey, so watch the announcements. Have a blessed day. We will see you Wednesday on the conference call for Bible study. Just let Pastor Patrick know you want to be a part. God bless. Yes. Good morning, CFA. How is everybody this morning? Let's go over a few announcements. Hey, church. I know things are weird. And it's hard not seeing each other, but you can still plug in. We have our women's Bible study going on at Sundays at 9 a.m. Um, they meet together through Zoom. And for more information and how to log on to Zoom, contact Pastor Brad. Hey church, also on Wednesday nights, pretty amazing. If you log on to our Facebook at 7 p.m., we have our Bible study going on with Patrick and Amy. You don't want to miss it. So we have our Now Youth Facebook page as well, and they do a live service at 6 p.m. on Sundays. So join Pastor Amy for that at our Now Youth Facebook page. Also, church, we have an amazing, amazing kids pastor, Pastor Kathy, and she'll be doing a live show right after our celebration service around 11 o'clock on Sundays. So join us for that. It's on our Facebook page. So we also have our couples group still going on. To find us, you got to go on to Facebook. And it's on CFA Couples Connection. Also, we meet on Saturdays at 7 p.m. through Zoom. For more information on all these ministries, contact Pastor Brad. Hi, everybody. So it's my turn to talk. Now that Phil has shared some important information with you, I want to share some more important information. As we're going through this season, and it looks like we're going to be doing this for, for at least six more weeks, it looks like, I want to encourage each and every one of you to make sure that you are following the church on our Facebook page. That's at www.facebook.com slash carlsbad, the numeral one, S-T. Dot com. If you go there, you'll go straight to our page. Make sure you're following there. Some of you I know have gotten off Facebook and listen, I don't blame you. It's a mess sometimes. But could I encourage you at least during this season, get back on because it's the best place uh, to get information as we're going forward. That's where our Facebook live stream is at for now. That's where all of our announcements are at for now. Now, eventually, Everything will be set up inside of our church app where you won't have to use Facebook Live. We'll have a streaming service on the church app as well as the videos as we do our announcements. They'll appear in our YouTube channel and you can see those through the church app as well. Uh, app, app as well. Now, for those of you that haven't got the church app yet, the second thing you really need to be doing following us on Facebook, follow us on our website www.carlsbadfirst.com. Make sure you're going there on a regular basis. We are adding all kinds of new um, features on there. Uh, 
I've got some exciting ones. I don't want to get too far ahead of it, but the, in the next week, I should have some really cool stuff on there that will help you and your family to stay engaged and connected in your faith and in the community of faith. And so go to the website. Now on the website, you'll see a spot on there where it says church app. There's a little link underneath. It has one for Apple Store, App Store, and one for Android. Click on the one that matches your phone, download the app. And when you open the app, when you pick it up and you open up that app, it's gonna open up and the first thing it's gonna ask is, what is the church you wanna affiliate with? You just type in Carlsbad First Assembly, Carlsbad, New Mexico, and it will go right to ours and it'll ask if you want a link. Once you link, you're in and it won't ask again. From then on, whenever you open that church app, it's gonna open up our church app, which will give you access to, for now, it'll give you access to the uh, YouTube channel that has uh, the back uh, sermons as we preach them. They go up on the YouTube channel. It will also eventually have a church stream live feed so that you can go and use that app instead of Facebook to watch our Sunday morning services. And it also includes our e-giving. Listen, can I say thank you for all of you that are that have been so faithful in continuing to, to bring in, to, to send in the tithe. It's so important that we continue to move forward as a church. And to do that, we still need your support. I have a staff that I love and I, we have assured them they're not going anywhere. We're gonna pay their salary. But to do that, we still need your help. So go on, uh, go on the app, click and go to the e-giving and it will walk you through the steps that you'll need to do. You'll see a page that looks like this, says Give Now, Carlsbad First Assembly. Then there's a little fund button. You push the fund button and then you can pick. Do you want to give to the general fund or if you want to give to missions or anything special? And then you'll put in the amount and then um, it and then uh, and then you can hit submit. You can actually tell it to do it recurring. So you can have it do it every month uh, or you can just do it each time you want to go on. And that's totally fine. Now, I know some of you, uh, I won't mention any names, but her initials are Amy Long. And she's told me that she loves the text to give feature, which you don't need the app for that. All you need to do is do what all of you do best. Pull up your text app in the little, uh, the uh, you start a, a new text. And in the part that says two, you simply type in this phone number. One, you have to do the one, one, five, seven, five, two, one, four, seven, zero, four, four. Once you've typed that number in there, then down in the message part, you're going to type in the word give and then hit send. And it will bring up a link that will take you to the same page I just showed you a moment ago. And then from there, you, you'll click, tell what you want to send. It will ask you for your credit card information, your debit card information. It offers you the opportunity to put in your uh, direct checking account information if you prefer to do that. So, uh, but thank you as you continue to give and support us. You can use text to give, you can use e-giving. And listen, I know some of you, you're like me, you just like to write checks. There's, I don't get to write many checks anymore. So when you, if you prefer to give through a check or, or anything like that, many of you already mail in your tithe. Thank you for continuing to do that. Or if you prefer, there is a mail slot on the outside of Sarah's office at the church office there. You can slip your envelope through that mail slot anytime during the week. We will pick up the, that uh, your tithe at that time and take care of it. So as always, I want to thank you for continuing to be connected into our church, continuing to be a part. As Phil shared with you, there's so many exciting opportunities for you to still continue to be engaged, to be growing in your faith and growing in the knowledge of the Lord. This is not a time where, uh, I've said it before, I don't like social distancing. I agree with physical distancing. We need to be safe. But don't be socially distant as believers right now. Stay connected with one another, encouraging one another, lifting one another up. And even though you're not here in the flesh on Sunday mornings and you're not here when we gather when we gather to put together our live service, you need to know something. In our hearts, we always feel the same way. To each and every one of you, you're our family. And to you we say, welcome home.
All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us here for Carlsbad First Assembly Live. God bless you. Pray you have a mighty week in the name of Jesus.